Jeez, as soon as I click the go live button, my camera disappears. Are we back? Are we back? Can we be back? Oh my gosh. You gotta be kidding me. Hello, there we go. Hello everybody. We're here today on Coffee Lake launch day. Thank you all for joining me. Just wanna make sure everything's muted on this side. There we go. Yes, so Coffee Lake launch day. Uh, there's a ton of stuff that's just been going on. Um, there's, there's been getting ready for Coffee Lake. There's been stuff to do for Rage, which is starting tomorrow. There has been, yeah, just going to Rage tomorrow, trying to prepare in advance. Then I'm going on holiday with my family next week. So it's been a, a, a real mission to kind of get everything started. Hey, everybody who's joining the chat. Olaf, Xbox Gamer, thank you guys for joining in. Um, yeah, so with Coffee Lake uh, and all of the benchmarks that are coming out, I'm sure you guys have probably watched by now, it's a pretty good, decent set of chips. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll do a Q&A on that in just a bit. But first, I wanted to do an unboxing of the Seuss Prime Z370A live here on camera just because producing one was literally going to take time that I just don't have right now in between getting the Coffee Lake uh, review launch out and then also going to Rage tomorrow. So live video it is, that's gonna allow us to actually get to experience this together. So I guess, um, yeah, I'll just wait for you guys to trickle in. Nadelku, I probably butchered that. Thank you for joining, glad to have you here. I'll let you guys trickle in before we start unboxing this, uh, this puppy right here, but I'm pretty excited. Do you guys have uh, anything you want to comment? Hey, Greg Rules, glad to have you here. Um, just trying to figure out some stuff with the stream before we proceed with everything else. Okay, we're good. We're good on that front, that front, that front. Not that one. Don't do that to me. Give me that. Okay. You haven't watched anything from Coffee Lake yet because you just came home from school and you're watching me. Well, spoiler alert, um, it's basically it's basically um, Sky Lake and Katie Lake with extra cores. So not not a not a whole lot going on with that. Although those extra cores are still really good. You can clock up to five gigahertz, which we'll have a video coming out on overclocking the Coffee Lake chips uh, just coming up. Which rage am I going to? Uh, Rage Joburg? Is there another one? Because they kind of canceled the other one. Hello, Miko. Glad to have you here. Am I still mining? Um, not since I moved into the new, new office. It's kind of been a bit difficult to get everything set up. Gene, uh, heyo. How's it going, man? Uh, am I going to be at Rage this weekend? Yes. I'm definitely heading to Rage tomorrow, which is why we're doing a live unboxing instead of me producing a video because just uh, time constraints. Uh, I wasn't going to get anywhere near this until next week, so I figured let's do it live. That's going to cut some time out of my day for video editing, and that's going to that's gonna make my life a whole lot easier. Hey, hey Gamehead, uh, glad to have you here. James Jones, Coffee Lake, yes. All right, so it seems like you guys are trickling in. We can go ahead and, uh, I guess, start the unboxing process um, of the Prime Z370A. And I'm not just gonna unbox it, uh, I'm also gonna set it up on a test bench so we can kinda see what it looks like when it's all set up. Um, but one of the biggest issues that, um, not, not just myself, but basically everybody in South Africa and across the world is really facing right now is that Coffee Lake is more of a paper launch and not a, a physical launch. So the chips aren't really coming out. So the review samples aren't really in the country. There's a few, but they're here and there. Asus had to give them to somebody else. So I didn't have one from Asus. I'm gonna get it later to actually do the review. Yada, yada, yada. So we just have the motherboard here today, but we're gonna check it out. We're gonna light it up. We're gonna see how everything looks. Uh, DJ Unicorn, why so late? It's actually not that late. It's only 9 p.m. Uh, Greg Rules, you like Asus motherboards? I like them too. All right, so we open up the, the top flap on the Prime Z370A, and there you have it in the, uh, what is this called? Anti-static bag, we have that. But the most important thing of an unboxing is not the motherboard because you get motherboard reviews to look at motherboards. Unboxings show you what's in the box. So let's take the thing out of the tray and kind of just unbox everything. So first, we have an NVIDIA SLI high band with bridge, hard bridge, pretty cool. I actually really like these. They're a very uh, minimalistic design, which allows you to, to set everything up that way. Just bought yourself a Huawei P9 2017. Finally, I can throw out my old Galaxy Pocket 2. 
That sounds pretty fun. The Prime Series, yeah, there's not that much in here, but there's enough for us to take a look at. So then we have, so there's a bag with one SATA cable, and then there's a bag with two SATA cables. So you get three SATA cables, in case you can't count. Then we have the IO Shield, which it's the type with the squishy foam. So there we go. Tank, I will block you so hard if you do that. Get out of here with that nonsense. Okay, sorry, uh, chat stuff. What is this? Is this for 3D printing mounted? Asus fan holder. Okay, I'm gonna have to see where that goes. Uh, these are M.2 screws. Then we also have the, the Q Connect or Quick Connect, which allows you to plug everything in from your system onto the motherboard header pretty easily, get everything set up without having to actually fight with it. Then the CPU installation tool, which for all intents and purposes is not really useful to most people, but was actually pretty handy when we did the um, extreme overclocking event that uh, Dr. Rees and Asus put on, because this holds it in place while you re-put the, the CPU lid back on after you've delitted it and put on the uh, thermal interface material. Um, is it worth upgrading from fourth gen? If you're, if you're rocking a 4690K, yes, a 4790K, um, you're definitely gonna see IPC improvements. It's going to be faster, but whether or not those extra cores and lack of, uh, like those extra cores are really gonna benefit you is depending on a case by case basis, but it's actually the most compelling Intel generation to upgrade to since, you know, Sandy Bridge came along. So uh, we, we said that in the review and it kind of still holds true. Coffee Lake is, it, it provides something that Skylake and KB Lake really didn't. Skylake was just, faster. KB Lake was just higher clock speed and now we get that high clock speed and fasterness of Skylake and KB Lake, but then we get the extra course, which is pretty cool. Uh, what is the lowest you can go to build a new... I don't even know what that means. Okay, then we have some Beyond Custom. Uh, not Beyond Customs. He's the guy in South Africa. This is Cable Mod. This is the international people, but Beyond Customs is just as good. So we have a Cable Mod's 20% off uh, coupon code for anybody who wants to buy from... Uh, why aren't I reading Facebook comments? Because I can't have everything open at once and it's really hard. Barack, hello. Cameron, Ryzen is still a better value. That is very much true. Yanni or Janie, I don't know how to pronounce names anymore. I'm living in South Africa. Everybody has different pronunciations for different consonants and I have no idea how to do it. I just, I, I say things in my American way and I always do everything wrong. So anyways, uh, I'm not reading Facebook comments because it's kind of hard for me to manage uh, both YouTube and Facebook at the same time and my YouTube audience is more uh, prevalent. Okay, then we have fin holder instructions. That's gonna be pretty cool, so I'm gonna stick that right there so we can figure that out. Then we have the user's guide, which I, there's not really a whole lot special about Z370, so we don't need a user's guide. And then chipset and driver CDs. So normally, it's pretty funny to just kind of, you know, throw those, throw these away, but it saved our butts because with the, uh, the review we did on Coffee Lake, we couldn't get drivers for anything because they're not online. It's like we, we wanted to do an integrated graphics test on the UHD 630 and the only way that we could actually get drivers for the UHD 630 was this driver uh, disc right here. So while it's fun to make a meme of throwing those away, they can sometimes be useful so don't necessarily actually throw them away, just kind of discard them. Upgrade from a 2700K at 5 gigahertz. You'll be able to get 5 gigahertz with most 8700Ks. Um, I know Gamers Nexus said that they struggled to get 4.9 with theirs. Um, but with that, like 4.9, but then you have six cores and 12 threads, which is, you know, 50% more than what you have now. And if you're actually gonna use that 50% extra thread count, then yeah, definitely do it. How much GPU supported on the, the Prime? Uh, uh, probably two, I didn't read the box. Who, nobody does pass two these days anyways, unless you're me and you're trying to make a weird thread ripper video. Uh, multi VGA, that's not helpful. How many, how many graphics cards? I'm, I'm just gonna say two, it supports two because anything beyond that's stupid. Uh, and it has two uh, reinforced steel PCI Express slots. So that's pretty, that's gonna be good enough for you. you just need two graphics cards, that's, that's all you need. Hi from Indonesia. Well, hello right back from South Africa. All right, so here we have the board. So we got the four dim slots. Let's start from top to bottom, shall we? So we have the eight pin power connector. Then we have the VRM and a fin cooler, which 
you know, with Z370, it's not going to be as big of a deal as X299, so I'm not really too concerned there. Then you have, is that is that a high? Is that, oh, optional CPU fan. So the white one is an optional CPU fan. Then you have a regular CPU fan. What's up here? Then you have a chassis fan. You have a memo K button and a power switch. Even on their entry level board, Asus includes power switches, which is fantastic because I keep my PCs all on test benches and that's gonna make this thing uh, so much easier to actually review. Um, yeah, so we have four dim slots, which I believe this supports over 4,000 megahertz memory. I should probably check the box. Supports up to 4,000 megahertz memory, which the, the interesting thing about Coffee Lake is that, um, so Skylake supported 2133 megahertz natively, then KB Lake support 2400 megahertz, and now you have 2666 megahertz native support on Coffee Lake, which is an improvement over everything else. All right, then we have more chassis fan headers down here, PCI Express uh, times one slot, then a 16 slot, then a second 16 slot, uh, and then it looks, oh, and a third 16 slot. So these are all 16 slots. Obviously with NVIDIA, you can only do two in SLI um, because they each need eight lanes and Coffee Lake doesn't include any more PCI Express lanes on the CPU than it did before. Is my camera slowly falling down? I think it is. Anyways, that's gonna be good enough. So you can support three, three AMD cards in Crossfire, but two, two NVIDIA SLI, but that's not a limitation of the board, that's a limitation of the CPU. Uh, then we also have an M.2 connector right over here. Then I assume that there's probably going to be one under this uh, PCH cover right here. And I assume that's going to grow glow LEDs. Um, what else do we got? What is that? A TB header. What does TB stand for? What is a TB header? Okay, it has TPU, trust your platform module, but that's not what I'm looking for. What does TB mean? Anybody know? It also has a dim.2 slot? No, it does not. This, this particular board does not have a dim.2 slot anywhere. Yeah, so the, the dim.2 slot doesn't exist. It just has two M.2 uh, slots right there. Thunderbolt. That, that could be possible. That doesn't look like a standard Thunderbolt connector though. I'm not quite sure. Anyways, moving on. So you have TPM connections, then you have a RGB header right there. M.2 um, fan. Okay, so it's just another fan connector, but they specifically designate it as an M.2 fan header right down there. Then you have everything for turning on the system, two USB 2.0 ports, USB 3.0, another 3.0, another 3.0. So you get three USB 3.0 uh, connectors, then audio, a whole external fan, but they don't include a fan bridge. Okay, so the thing that I wanted to check out was this whole fan holder thing. How does this work? Is this for the M.2 or no, it goes at the top. So is it just a, wait. So it's just screws that go here and then it holds your fan over what now? Was it supposed, was it over here? But then what are, you, what are you actually cooling down? Is it just for the VRMs? Did they learn their lesson with X299 VRMs and they included a fan holder so that you can blow the heat away? Uh, yeah, so let me let me get, get back to chat. Why Intel Asus Prime boards look better than AMD's? I hate it. I actually don't know what the uh, the X370 Prime boards look like. No, they, they look about the same, don't they? Is it for mining? No, this is not for mining. This is a gaming board. This is for gaming. This is for the 8600, 8700, 8350K, whatever you want. Uh, should I get this motherboard or anything else for 8700K? Yeah, you're going to need a 300 series chipset board for uh, Coffee Lake. So Z370 is probably the way to go. So there's not much to the unboxing, but now I'm going to grab my test bench, my lovely test bench that's right over here. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna set it up. We're gonna take a look at how this how this baby looks. So let me let me spend some time setting this up, and you guys can just keep on chatting, and we can uh, we can we can have a lovely conversation while I try to get this affixed to my test bench. My X three seventy Prime board doesn't have a shroud above the I O. Oh yeah, that's that's okay. That's a good point. That's a fair point. 
Uh, I didn't even talk about the I.O. So you have USB 3.1 type A and type C, then you have a DVI out, HDMI out, display port out, which is pretty handy. Really limited on the USB ports. Two USB 2, two USB 3.0, gigabit ethernet jack, and then audio ports. It's a very slim board in terms of like its feature set, but uh, it's kind of their entry level Z370 as I understand it. So it's basically everything that you need, but not necessarily everything that you would want. And that's like, that's the thing that I, I just don't get about Asus and their boards because like on the Crosshair 6 Hero, they included a butt ton of USB ports, but then I haven't found a single other board in their lineup that really has as many boards as, or as many ports as that. Am I gonna stream more? Um, I'm considering it. I would like to connect with you guys more. That's probably one of the biggest things that I've noticed is a flaw with my, uh, my YouTube channels. I just, I'm all presentation and very little uh, connection with the audience and I, I kind of really want to change that. So I'm working on that, uh, thinking about streaming more. Uh, so watch this space for sure. Is USB 3.1 Gen 2 on the chipset or the AS Media controller? I am actually not sure. I don't know. Couldn't tell you right now. I'd have to actually look pre uh, look at the the manual. It's probably be faster if you looked it up online. Honestly, um, you should make a Discord server so that we can chat. There actually is a UF Disciple Discord server. Um, it was pretty successful when I first launched it, but then I let it die, and uh, trying to resurrect it is not necessarily the easiest thing to do. All right, so let's uh, let's pick up a Strix graphics card just so we can get a uh, maximum RGB-ness on this. Let me just tighten this in, and then we'll turn it on. We'll see how everything looks. Uh, why did I move to South Africa? Uh, a lot of reasons. The primary one is to do charity work. So uh, somebody else asked about my day job. Uh, my wife and I do charity work as a as our full time profession, and then um, I do YouTube on the side. And it's kind of always going to stay that way. Um, no matter how many subscribers I have, no matter how big uh, I get, I'm never really going to be able to dedicate more time to YouTube than I currently already do. Wow, this is. This cable is not cooperating. There we go. Come on, cable. You gotta be kidding me. Okay, this is a two-handed operation, apparently. Because it wants to like unrotate itself while I'm trying to plug it in. There we go, okay. So here's the board. There we go. You guys can see that. You can see the Strix GPU. Let me zoom out a bit, actually. Oh, it's already pretty much fully zoomed out. Uh, did I see the new Google Pixel? No, I did not. I literally, quite literally, have had no time to actually engage in anything besides what uh, my life and YouTube has kind of dictated. Um, because as I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, <sighs> life, I mean, my wife is pregnant with her third child. She's due in less than a month, so we're, we're trying to get ready for that. My mother-in-law is coming to stay with us in South Africa, so we're trying to get ready for that. Excuse me, then we have Rage coming up, then Coffee Lake, and it's just been, it's been one wild ride. Uh, you forgot to like this video. Okay, done. Thank you, man. Everybody who's forgotten to like this video, go ahead and smash that like button. It is time to smash that like button. You know what I mean? Do you watch my cousin S. Clark? No, I have no idea what that is. Okay, so the board is turned on. Let's, uh, let's power it up. Is it on? The switch on, everything's on. Power, good, yes. Uh, you're gonna do this to me? Oh no, really? There we go. Are you one of those boards that won't turn on if you don't have a CPU in them? That is not why I hired you. Let me just check all the connections for the power cables. Oh, ha, power cable came unplugged, it's not the board. There we go, look at that underglow LED. So let's just turn this on. Can I watch this video from the start? Yeah, you can watch this video from the start, that's fine. So let's, or are you one of the, are you not turning on because I don't have everything plugged in? I just want all the RGBs to turn on, that's it. Why are you doing this? This is the, the issue of doing things live. Do I have to, um, 
bridge the connections. Can I make bry, I don't even know how to say that next word, Dios. Can I make bry whatever? No, I can't. I can't bry for garbage, because I'm an American, we barbecue. And even then I didn't do that too frequently. Okay, so without the chip in, this board is not gonna let me uh, do much with it. You can see the, the RGB LEDs that are on the side. Let me go ahead and turn off the light so that we can get a better look at that. How pretty is that? That's pretty nice. I just wish it would turn on the power LEDs on. Why aren't you actually working though? It actually needs the CPU. Boop. Okay, fine. Not a problem. I didn't have this issue with uh, with their X299 board. Uh, with the X299 Strix, I did a video where I just kind of had the CPU sitting out of it because I was doing a review on the CPU and I just had the board on the side and. The motherboard lit up perfectly well without the CPU in, uh, but with this one, not so much. Safety feature, I suppose. They don't want you shorting anything out. Man, that makes me sad. All right, whatever. Okay. Uh, yeah, put the six core best in there. I don't, unfortunately, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the, uh, at the beginning of the stream, I don't have uh, a review sample chip on hand anymore. Uh, the one I had for the review had to go back for Rage, so I don't have that anymore. And then the other review sample chip that Asus had, they sent to another reviewer, so I don't have my hands on it, so I can't actually test this board until I get that. Um, so yeah, that's they, they wanted me to do something for launch day, so I did an unboxing, here it is, here you go. Unboxing of the Z370 Prime-A, or Z Prime Z370-A, however you say that. Um, but yeah, review samples are super limited in this country. I mean, it was even fortunate that we could get an i5-8600 well before launch to even do reviews. Um, just because it, it, was, it was such a struggle to get samples here. Uh, try putting CPU fan. Why would I do that? It doesn't turn on because it doesn't have a CPU fan. I, I don't think that's how it works, but you know what? I'm going to humor you guys. Let me grab a fan. One of my uh, trusty Corsair HD120 fans. Plug it into the CPU fan. If this works, I'm gonna be mega confused. No. Yeah, it wasn't even turning on to power on a fan, so I didn't think that, yeah, doing that's not really gonna help anything. Yeah, 24 pin connectors firmly secured, 8 pin CPU connectors firmly secured. Everything's plugged in, as you can see from the RGB LEDs, but uh, it's not going to turn on, I think, unless I have a CPU in there. I don't think a CPU fan has anything to do it. Yeah, it's a safety measure. It's, no, a, C, a CPU fan is not a safety measure. A CPU fan will give you an error code when you're trying to actually load into Windows. It's gonna say, are you sure? You can also disable that in the BIOS, but not actually turning on at all because you don't have a CPU fan is not something I've ever heard on heard of on a PC. All right. Cool. All right, guys. I think uh, let's basically transition into uh, Q and A. But after that. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna call it early. We're gonna we're gonna end the live stream probably about 30 minutes. So we can just do a Q&A for a little bit. Uh, thanks, UF Disciple. Congrats on the baby. Thanks, James. Uh, we're pretty excited. It's gonna be number three. Yeah, we're uh, gonna be a family five. That's gonna be pretty pretty intense. Much love from India. Thanks, man. Really appreciate it. Glad to have you here. Thank you, everybody who's joined, uh, who's watched. It's been uh, it's been pretty cool to have you guys here. Uh, test the Pentium E5200 if I ever get it going to rage. Yes, I will be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, so be sure to come by if you're there, S stop me, say hi, whatever you want. Um, yeah, be glad to meet, meet you guys uh, talk about that. Let me go, go back up. 
What is my favorite X399 board? Um, you know, I haven't tested it, but Gigabyte just released their Designare X399, and boy, does that thing look clean. It is, it's just like a, a clean silver and like, just a very simple aesthetic. Um, but as far as like the best X399 board, the Zenith Extreme from ASUS is probably like top of the line. Everything has all the features that you're gonna ever want or need. Do more live streams via response? Okay, yeah, I'll do that. I'll... It's in the works, it's in the considerations. Um, how is this MOBO for OC? I don't know, I haven't tested it yet. This is just a live unboxing. I never took it out of the, no, I did take it out of the box once before I did this live stream, so I have no experiences with, with this motherboard whatsoever. I've actually never even had a Prime motherboard before. Actually, no, that's a lie. Is that a Prime? Okay, never mind, I lied. I did have a Prime board before. So my first Ryzen board was this uh, Prime B350 Plus. Uh, I quickly upgraded to X370 because this, like the VRM and heat sinks and every, like this is just a, this is a budget board and I wanted something a bit more uh, comprehensive. But uh, yeah, Prime is their entry level. I'm sure that it's gonna do perfectly fine. I'm sure that the, the board's not gonna be the limitation for the overclocking, it's gonna be the chip itself. Try unplugging it and plugging it back in. I'm not gonna try to turn this thing on anymore. Who is your favorite YouTuber? Oh, that's pretty easy. That is super easy to know. Uh, board's out of focus? Yeah, that's because I'm in focus. The board was in focus earlier, so that, that's what matters. Board's out of focus now because uh, we're talking. I'm, I'm the, the focus of the subject right now, okay? Where's my portable PC? Toadie, um, he had to be dismantled in order to uh, kind of allow me to use some of the parts that he was using. Um, geez. The, the Ryzen 5 1600 that was in Todi, uh, I actually needed for something I'm doing at Rage this weekend. I'm gonna be doing a live stream PC build with Cooler Master. Um, so I'm doing a Ryzen 5 build and yeah, we'll do that live on Saturday. Uh, do you need Z370 board for eighth gen CPUs? If you want to overclock, yes. Uh, there are going to be uh, B series and H series boards for, for Coffee Lake, but you cannot use anything of the 200 series boards for Coffee Lake. You need to upgrade to a 300 series chip. Where's Tony? Tony? No, it's Toti. His name is Toti. His name is Toti, not Tony. Info on ASUS's site is confusing me. Can I connect two case USB 3.0 plus two case USB 2.0 plus three devices that need internal USB 2.0? Um, here, let me, let me turn this off and unscrew the graphics card and get this out of here. Come on, get out of the slot. There we go. Okay, uh, there's two USB 2.0 and then uh, two USB 3.0. Yeah, that's right. Um, do you think the i5-8400 is very good for gaming? I have a second PC that I can set up for streaming. The i5-8400 is a pretty compelling buy. Uh, I can't exactly remember what the pricing was. It was something like close to what, $200, somewhere around there. Uh, that's that's pretty good. The, the issue that I have with the 8400, and which was the issue I had with the 6400 and the 7400, that base clock of 2.8 gigahertz is gonna really hamper you in a lot of scenarios. I can't remember what the all-core boost on it was, uh, but I don't think it's actually gonna be that high to kind of make up for uh, yeah, the, the, the limitations of that 2.8 gigahertz base clock. Um, why doesn't ARC's website show me the all core overclock? Yeah, so all cores, one, a single core with US uh, Turbo Boost 2.0 will only get you up to four gigahertz, which means that I'd probably expect a, I, I don't know, I'm guessing 3.6 all core boost, which isn't that great because you can get a Ryzen 5 1600 that can go up to four gigahertz for about the same price. And that's that's gonna give you more threads, faster frequency, and might be a better buy than the 8400. I don't know, it's kind of complicated. Uh, best time to build a gaming PC in South Africa? Will there be specials over the holidays now? The best time to build a PC in South Africa is as soon as you have the cash because there's kind of always exchange rate fluctuations that are going on, uh, which can screw you over immediately if you don't buy when you actually have the cash on hand. 
Um, I would assume that there's probably going to be Black Friday specials and all that kind of stuff. Good time to buy secondhand Skylake. Uh, by the way, did you give, did Intel give you CPUs to use or did Wootware hook you up? Uh, actually, neither. It was, um, for the review, it was MSI who provided the CPU for their board. They had to take that back for Rage. So now uh, Asus provided their board and now I'm waiting for Asus to provide their CPU, which they have. They just haven't uh, given it to me yet. Um, Wootware could hook me up, but we just, uh, we went with the vendors instead of Wootware doing it. Um, just because it's a bit smoother that way. Is the MOBO missing any essential features? Um, essential, no. Nothing, nothing that's not essential. So you have an M.2 drive, you have plenty of SATA ports, you have USB 3 headers, you have four uh, DIMM slots that can support up to four, four gigahertz memory. Um, then you have three PCI Express 16 slots. Like that's, that's basically the essentials for a PC build. It has an RGB header, which everybody needs in this day and age because you need your RGB. Um, so no, this has all of the essentials. It's missing a few creature comforts like extra USB ports um, and a few other things, but it's like, this is, this is the perfect, as, as I can see it, this is the perfect Asus board if you just want like minimalism. If you want the bare minimum, but you want an overclockable motherboard, the Z370, Prime, no, the Prime Z370-A is gonna be your best bet as far as like lower end Z series uh, motherboards. Should you upgrade to an i7-8700K to I, from i7-7700K? That depends. Were you compelled at all to switch to Ryzen 7 because of those extra cores? If you don't need the extra cores, the 8700K doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because you can still hit, you get five gigahertz on the 7700K, you get five gigahertz on the 8700K. It's gonna perform the, about the same in games. It's whether or not you need those cores. Like right now, I'm live streaming, I'm using a DSLR, I have a few other things going on, and those eight cores on my Ryzen 7 1700, they're all working pretty hard right now to, to, to make this happen because I'm streaming to both Facebook and YouTube natively, which both require CPU cores to actually uh, make do. So like each, every single one of my CPU cores right now, here, let me, uh, let me grab this for you. Screen capture, will you do this? So every single one of my, my uh, Ryzen cores right now are actively working at about 35 to 45%, depending on what's going on with the screen. That's pretty good. Um, if I was doing this on a 7700K, I'd be probably close to 100% uh, CPU utilization just because it's gonna use all of each of those four cores and more. So having more cores for streaming and stuff like this, especially if I was playing video games right now, would be pretty intense. So if you're, if you're planning on streaming at all while you game, then the 8700K is probably a better buy than the 7700K. But then it, you could also get into the Ryzen 7 1700 is a better buy than that because it's going to give you the extra cores to actually stream a little bit better. You have the Z270 Prime, what's the difference? Um, I actually don't know because I never had this uh, Z370 Prime, uh, Z270 Prime rather. Um, basically, I'm probably gonna chalk it up to it's just the socket difference. You can't put a Coffee Lake chip in your board and you can't put a KB Lake chip in this board. That's basically it. Um, supposedly, rumors have it that there's gonna be an eight core Coffee Lake coming down the line, which is why they had to switch over to Z370 um, because it's gonna require a bit more, pro, uh, uh, it's gonna require something different than Z270 had because they weren't planning on launching an eight core processor on uh, the 200 series. Supposedly, um, I'm not too sure on that, but yeah, you have to get a Z370 board if you wanna go with Coffee Lake. So instead of going for the i5-8400, should I go for the i5-8600 if you have the money for it? If you want that extra clock speed, definitely. The 8600, I mean, you can put the 8600 at five gigahertz on all cores. That's completely different than having 3.7 gigahertz on all cores. It's definitely a better experience if you're gaming with that. Intel may be more expensive to get a good MOBO compared to AMD, but if you want to get close to Intel performance, you would most likely end up spending some extra cash on faster RAM. Yeah, but the cost of the higher speed RAM is negligible. Like it, it's not it's not as much as the distance between X370 and Z370 uh, like it is from like 2666 to 3200. That gap between RAM prices isn't as high as the gap between the motherboard prices. So I don't know, it's a toss up. Although RAM prices right now are pretty screwed up. So that's take my statement with a grain of salt. Would you say upgrading from 4790 
k to this processor is worth it. I've already answered that. Um, it's it's basically whatever. Do you need strictly for strictly for gaming? No, uh, I I would say wait. Uh, you're you're getting close to about the same, especially if you're not running a 1080 Ti at 1080p. If you're running anything less than a 1080 Ti or at 1080p or higher resolution, then the the faster processor isn't going to make a difference for you in basically any way, shape, or form. All right, guys, uh, last few questions coming in and then I'm going to end this stream there. I need to get to editing tomorrow's video um, and I'm gonna have to stay up pretty late to get that done because I'm gonna be at Rage all day tomorrow but I need the video to come out tomorrow night. So yeah, last few questions and then it's gonna be uh, game over for us tonight. Um, would you guys want me to do more live streams? Would you, uh, what type of live streams would you like to do? Do you like this like tech talk type of stuff? Would you prefer some like gaming live streams? Uh, like I'm keen to play PUBG with you guys. Just gotta let me know what 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 you want. Um, so yeah, just uh, let me know. Give us one of the graphics cards. One of what graphics cards? None of these are mine. Am I gonna vlog rage? No, I'm not. Jeez. So that like that's the thing about me discovering myself over this YouTube journey. I'm not a vlogger. I am terrible on camera. I am so bad impromptu. It's not even funny. Like right now for me to do this live stream is taking so much of my introvert self to, to kind of muster through that it's like it like vlogging is just not a it's not a pretty picture for me. Um, so yeah, vlogging is not is not in the cards, but uh, I will be covering some of the, the PC stands that are going on at Rage. Uh, I know that Asus is going to be at the Incredible Connection stand. There's a few other companies that are going to be there. Cooler Master is going to be there. I'm doing a live stream with them on Saturday. Uh, we're going to be doing a, a, a live stream PC build, so that's going to be pretty fun. Uh, GeForce 1080 Ti or Radeon M265. Should I delid the i7-7700K to achieve 5 gigahertz? Um, I would delid my i7-7700K if I wasn't so sure that I was going to get rid of it to get Coffee Lake. Um, but yeah, it's it's not that you can't get 5 gigahertz if you have the 7700K not delidded. It's just that the temps will be much lower if you do delid and replace the thermal paste. Gaming while talking about tech. Okay, we could do like a Q&A gaming stream. Um, hello from Poland. Hey man, glad to have you here. Deck station. Is deck station like a live stream thing? Like uh, it's live streaming equipment? Is that right? What camera do you have? I have a Panasonic GH4. Is Ryzen dead? No, Ryzen is far from dead. Um, Ryzen just kind of got relegated to the position that AMD was always in, which was like the best budget CPU. So so the FX series when it first came out was like, it was pretty decent. You, It was a good budget um, eight core CPU that you could get. And it kind of just never really continued. Um, and Ryzen is kind of at that stage that the FX series was at at the beginning where it's like, okay, this is great. It was amazing on launch. Now Intel is kind of showing, hey, no, we have better architecture than you do. So AMD is, AMD is still great if you want budget and if you want an eight core on, on the cheap. Um, would I benefit from 3200 megahertz RAM or should I get any lower? It depends on what you're trying to do. It depends on what applications you're running. Um, yeah, the RAM speed does matter despite the rumors that are out there that it doesn't because of that one video that Linus did like six years ago. RAM speed does matter, not just even on Ryzen, it just depends on the applications and the games that you're actually gonna be using. Do more live streams, PC builds, Q and A. Okay, I'll try. Uh, so, what deck is the board mounted on? Oh, this is the uh, this is the Open Bench Table BC One. Um, it's a pretty awesome uh, test bench. Oh my gosh! Okay, this uh, I'm not even going to show you. So it uh, it has push pins for mounting the the motherboard, so it just kind of slides on and off, but it's actually completely secure. And then I got 3D printed feet for it so that I can stand it up like this. It's pretty cool. Uh, what are my thoughts on the new i3? Uh, I have no idea. I haven't actually even read a review on the i3 and I haven't got my hands on one, so I don't even know. Um, how can I grow as a tech channel? Keep doing videos, keep trying, keep putting out your best content. It's actually more about the, the journey than it is about like getting uh, to a destination. 
All right, guys, that's 40 minutes. I'm going to wrap this live stream up there. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this unboxing of the ASUS Prime Z370A and Coffee Lake Q&A. It was great having you all here. Thank you for everybody who joined, who commented from every part of the world. Um, yeah, great to have you guys here. If you are going to be at Rage tomorrow or any time during this weekend and you see me around, please stop me, please say hi. It's gonna be a little awkward. I'm not great at fan interactions, but you know what, I'm gonna try. I wanna say, I wanna see you guys, I wanna say hey. Um, and you know, I'm really thankful for the fact that you guys watch my videos, that we've been able to build a channel together. Uh, it's been pretty cool. I'm glad that so many of you guys could even turn in, tune in for what's just a, a plain unboxing. It's pretty cool having you guys here. Anyways, I need to get to video editing. I'm going to end the stream there. Thank you guys. Again, I just say thank you a lot because I really do appreciate you and it's also the easiest way to end anything. Goodbye.